Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Gaurav Dhawanlal and with me is Ramya with the evening news. The headlines. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar says China's disregard of border pacts casting a shadow on relations with India. Home Minister Amit Shah addresses public meeting in Telangana assures farmers of special measures for marketing of organic produce. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari says conversion of waste material to wealth vital for country's infrastructure development. Senior Congress leader Anand Sharma quits as chairman of steering committee of parties Himachal Pradesh unit. Pakistani intruder arrested near LOC in Rajouri district of Jammu and Kashmir. Government awards GI tag to Mithila Makhana to boost farmers' income. In Durant Cup football, Army Green defeats Northeast United FC 3-1 at Guwahati. Mohammedan Sporting defeat Jamshedpur FC 3-0 in Kolkata. And in cricket, India to take on Zimbabwe in third and final one-day international in Harare tomorrow. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar has said, China has disregarded the border pacts with India. He said, the Galwan Valley standoff has been casting a shadow as ties between the two nations continue to go through a very difficult phase. Dr. J. Shankar was addressing the Indian community at Sao Paulo in Brazil today. The minister said, it is no secret that India and China's relations are going through a very difficult phase, mainly because New Delhi has agreements with Beijing going back to the 1990s, which prohibit amassing of troops in the border areas. He said China has disregarded that. Dr. Jay Shankar said that a relationship cannot be a one-way street and mutual respect has to be there in order to sustain it. He said China is India's neighbor and everybody wants to get along with their neighbor, but on reasonable terms. Relationships are a two-way street. Lasting relationship cannot be a one-way street. So we need that mutual respect, we need that mutual sensitivity, we need that mutual interest. Right now, it's no secret, we are going through a very difficult phase and mainly because we have agreements with China going back to the 1990s, which prohibits bringing, you know, massing troops in the border areas. We have disregarded that you know, what happened in Galvan two years ago. So that problem has not been resolved and that is clearly casting a shadow. Recalling the success of Operation Ganga during the Ukraine and Russia conflict, the External Affairs Minister said, this is an India which is capable of big things. He said, as India is celebrating 75 years of independence, the mood in the country is very optimistic. Dr. Jay Shankar is in Brazil on the first leg of a three-nation visit to Latin American countries, including Argentina and Paraguay. The minister also thanked the Indian community for serving as an effective bridge between Brazil and India. He said, India-Brazil ties are defined by good sentiment, great goodwill and increasing cooperation. Senior BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah addressed a public meeting at the Munugode Assembly constituency of Telangana this evening. Munugode Assembly constituency is expecting a by-election soon following the resignation of the sitting Congress legislator K. Rajagopal Reddy. Speaking at the rally, Home Minister Amit Shah called upon the people of Telangana to end TRS rule in the state. He said, the BJP is the only alternative to the Telangana Rashtra Samiti, TRS, in the state. Mr. Shah said, the KCR government was anti-farmer. He said, the state government is not letting farmers avail the benefits of the PM Fasal Bima Yojana. किसान को बीमे से दूर रखने का पाप केसीआर ने किया है एक केसीआर सरकार किसान विरोधी है हमने कहा कि जाड़ा चावल जो राज्य की पैदाश है वो केसीआर खरीदे मिनिमम सपोर्ट प्राइस पर खरीदे मगर वो लेने के लिए तैयार नहीं है मैं आज इस मंच से मेरे किसान भाइयों को कहकर जाता हूं भारतीय जनता पार्टी की कमल निशान की सरकार बना दो मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में तेलंगाना भाजपा सरकार हर किसान का हर किलो जाड़ा चावल खरीदने का वादा कर the Home Minister said that if the BJP comes to power in the state, 
इट विल टेक तेलंगाना अहेड ऑन द पास ऑफ प्रोग्रेस मोदी जी ने दो लाख करोड़ से ज्यादा सहायता करने के बाद भी आज तेलंगाना ऋण में डूबा है मैं आपको वादा कर कर जाता हूं राजगोपाल रेड्डी को प्रचंड बहुमत से जिताइए तेलंगाना में भाजपा सरकार बनाइए पूरे देश की तरह तेलंगाना भी विकास के रास्ते पर चल पड़ेगा और जिन उद्देश्य के लिए तेलंगाना की स्थापना की गई थी वो सारे उद्देश्य तेलंगाना बीजेपी का मुख्यमंत्री हमारे महान नेता नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में समाप्त करेगा द होम मिनिस्टर सेड leaders from other parties are joining the bjp as they are impressed by the principles of the party mr shah welcomed the sitting mla k rajgopal reddy who resigned recently and a few others into the party the union home minister is on a day long visit to telangana today earlier mr shah met with over a dozen farmers in hyderabad farmers informed the home minister that they are facing losses as the fasal bima scheme is not being properly implemented in the state The Home Minister assured them that special measures will be taken soon for the marketing of organic farm produce. He shared his experience of organic farming with the farmers and the need for strengthening the same. Mr. Shah also visited the house of senior party worker Satya Narayana in Sikandrabad along with Tourism Minister G. Kishan Reddy, Party State President Bandi Sanjay Kumar and National General Secretary in charge Telangana Tarun Chok this afternoon. Mr Shah has assured the BJP cadres that he stands with them and that they should confidently fight against the anti people's rule in Telangana. BJP national president Jagat Prakash Nadda has said that the alumni of any institute are a source of inspiration for new students as their achievements and accomplishments are exemplary examples for all. Mr Nadda was addressing the alumni meet 2022 of Himachal Pradesh University held at the university campus in Shimla today. Ms. addressing the event chief minister jairam thakur said during last 53 years the university made great achievements and has been accredited as an a grade university mr thakur said the university is also striving hard to achieve excellence in the field of sports and other co curricular activities the bjp today launched a scathing attack on advin kejriwal government in delhi and sought to know why the new excise policy was withdrawn if there was no corruption in the matter addressing a press conference in new delhi party spokesperson gorav bhatia alleged that during the second phase of covid pandemic delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal was busy indulging in corruption by signing new excise policy instead of focusing on hospital beds and medicines He said Mr Kejriwal should stop blaming law enforcement agencies as they are only doing their job Covid ki dusri lehar aayi Shri Narendra Modi ji ke netritva mein Bharatiya Janata Party pure desh ki janta ke sath khadi ho gayi dawai sunishchit kari hospital mein bed ho oxygen mile Arvind Kejriwal ki bhrashtachari kalam aapkari niti pe dastakat karne mein lagi thi Manish Sisodia वो अकाउंटेंट बन के ये देख रहे थे कि आम आदमी पार्टी के खजाने में जनता के पैसे की कितनी लूट आएगी मीन वाइल डेली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल अलेज दैट एट अ टाइम वन कॉमन मैन इज बैटलिंग विद इन्फ्लेशन एंड अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज बिजी यूजिंग सीबीआई एंड ईडी टू सेटल पोलिटिकल स्कोर्स Senior Congress leader Anand Sharma has resigned from the chairmanship of the steering committee of the Himachal Pradesh Congress ahead of the state assembly elections. In a tweet, Mr. Sharma said, "Given the continuing exclusion and insults, as a self-respecting person, he was left with no choice." He, however, said that he is a lifelong congressman and will remain firm on his convictions. Union Highways and Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari has said that the conversion of waste material to wealth is needed for the country's infrastructure development. The minister was addressing the National Conference for Civil Engineers and Professionals from Allied Industries being organized by the Association of Consulting Civil Engineers in Mumbai today. Speaking at the event, Mr Gadkari said Research should be undertaken to find out economically viable and environmental friendly alternatives for infrastructure projects. He stressed upon exploring the public private mode for implementing infrastructure projects. Union Minister of State for Home Nityanand Rai has said that the participation of women in police is increasing across the country and women are performing better in every field. 
addressing the inaugural session of National Conference of Women Police NCWP at Raj Bhavan in Shimla, Mr. Rai said that the center is trying to increase the number of women in the police force. He said that the objective of organizing this conference is to further develop the quality of leadership among women and to discuss the challenges faced by women police officers. The government today stated that there is no plan to import wheat into India and that the country has sufficient stocks to meet domestic requirements. Department of Food and Public Distribution clarified this in a tweet on reports about a possible import of wheat by the government. Media reports had claimed that the government is likely to buy wheat from overseas due to shortage of wheat and rising prices. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayshankar says China's disregard of border pacts casting a shadow on relations with India. Home Minister Amit Shah addresses public meeting in Telangana, assures farmers of special measures for marketing of organic produce. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari says conversion of waste material to wealth vital for country's infrastructure development. Senior Congress leader Anand Sharma quits as chairman of steering committee of party's Himachal Pradesh unit. A Pakistani intruder arrested near LOC in Rajori district of Jammu and Kashmir. Government awards GI tag to Mithila Makhana to boost farmers' income. In Durand Cup football, Army Green defeat Northeast United FC 3-1 at Gohati. Mohammedan Sporting defeat Jamshedpur FC 3-0 in Kolkata. And in cricket, India to take on Zimbabwe in third and final one-day international in Harare tomorrow. For quick news updates round the clock, Follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक टू दी इवनिंग न्यूज A Pakistani intruder was arrested by army troops near the line of control LOC in the Rajouri district of Jammu and Kashmir today. Our Jammu correspondent reports that the infiltrator sustained injuries when the army opened fire after observing suspicious movement from across the border in the Jhangar area of Naushera sector. Senior Superintendent of Police of Rajouri district Mohammad Aslam informed that an intruder was shot at and was injured when he was trying to come near the LOC. The intruder was taken into custody and shifted to a medical facility for treatment. The India Met Department IMD has forecast more rainfall in Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Jammu and Kashmir. Talking to AIR, senior scientist of the India Met Department R.K. Jainamani said, there is a deep depression over Madhya Pradesh which will lead to heavy rainfall tomorrow and on Tuesday. अभी जो डिप्रेशन है मध्य प्रदेश से ऊपर छत्तीसगढ़ के पास है जब वो जैसे ही आगे चलेगा तो रेन जो है ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ट्वेंटी थर्ड को बढ़ेगा तो ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ट्वेंटी थर्ड के लिए हम लोग हैवी रेनफॉल वार्निंग उत्तराखंड हिमाचल प्रदेश जम्मू कश्मीर रखते हैं और उसके साथ साथ प्लेन्स में जो राजस्थान एरिया है मध्य प्रदेश है नेक्स्ट फोर्टी एट आवर्स के लिए हम लोग मेनली मध्य प्रदेश के लिए आज है ट्वेंटी और ट्वेंटी सेकेंड के लिए राजस्थान के लिए रेड कलर वार्निंग दे रहे हैं बहुत ज्यादा बारिश होगा क्योंकि यहाँ एक एक डिप्रेशन बना हुआ है छत्तीसगढ़ के ऊपर जो राजस्थान Heavy rains triggering landslides and flash floods claimed 22 lives in Himachal Pradesh yesterday. Several people have also been injured in rain-related incidents, while six people are still missing in the state. Chakki Rail Bridge in Kangra district collapsed due to a flash flood yesterday. Talking to AIR News, Sudesh Kumar Mukta. 
Director, State Management Disaster Management Department said that Mandi, Kangra and Chamba districts are the most affected where maximum loss of life and property has been reported. काफी तेज बारिश पूरे हिमाचल प्रदेश में हुई है खासकर जो कुल्लू मंडी चंबा और बिलासपुर के क्षेत्र है कांगड़ा के क्षेत्र है उसमें बहुत ज्यादा अधिक बारिश हुई अगर हम आंकड़ों के हिसाब देखें तो लगभग 300 प्रतिशत ज्यादा बारिश एक दिन में यहां पर हो चुकी है तो इसके कारण काफी भारी जान माल का नुकसान हिमाचल प्रदेश को झेलना पड़ा है खासकर जो हमारा मंडी है चंबा है और जो कांगड़ा है इन जिलों को ज्यादा नुकसान हुआ है शिमला को भी नुकसान हुआ है अगर टोटल मिला देखा जाए तो इक्कीस लोगों की यहाँ पर डेथ रिपोर्ट की गई है तो लगभग बाईस डेथ कल यहाँ पर हुई है लोग अभी भी मिसिंग है और जो नुकसान है काफी मात्रा में हुआ है तो आज तक अगर देखा जाए तो साढ़े बारह सौ करोड़ रुपए क्योंकि अभी कल के आंकड़े और इकट्ठे हो रहे हैं तो साढ़े बारह सौ करोड़ से ज्यादा नुकसान हिमाचल को झेलना पड़ा है तो ओवरऑल देखा जाए तो मॉनसून इस बार काफी नुकसान हिमाचल देश कर रहा है और जो प्रोडिक्शन है वो लगभग पंद्रह सितम्बर तक ये मानसून एक्टिव रहेगा और आज भी कुछ एक जिलों में येलो अलर्ट है कल भी येलो अलर्ट है आकांक्षा और भी की जा रही है और एडवाइजरी जो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट है गवर्नमेंट के द्वारा निकाली गई है Chief Minister Jairam Thakur has directed officials to ensure immediate relief and rescue operations besides deploying men and machinery at strategic points. He said that major roads and apple growing areas and leading towards hospitals must be restored on priority. He also directed all the line departments to maintain proper coordination for effective rescue operations. In Uttarakhand, three people were killed and 13 others missing after heavy rain inflicted major damage in Dehradun district and other parts of the state. Since Friday, search for the missing people is underway. All the arrangements for food and lodging are being made by the government administration for the disaster affected families. The work of opening the travel routes is going on. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami has directed the concerned officers to make all arrangements by inspecting the disaster affected areas continuously. In Jammu and Kashmir, the Yatra to Sri Mata Vaishnu Devi Shrine atop Trikuta Hill in Katra town of Riyasi district resumed today after it was briefly suspended as a precautionary measure due to inclement weather conditions. AIR Jammu correspondent reports that the battery car services in Himkoti Mark and Ropeway to Bhaironji Temple are also operating smoothly. The central government has awarded a geographical indication GI tag to Mithila Makhana. With this move, growers will get the maximum price for their premium produce. Over 5 lakh farmers of Mithila region of Bihar will benefit from this decision. In a tweet, Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal said that Mithila Makhana is registered with the GI tag. Farmers will get a profit making which will become easier for them. Due to geographical indication tag to Mithila Makhana in the festive season, people outside Bihar will be able to use this auspicious material with reverence. Once a product gets this tag, any person or company cannot sell a similar item under that name. The tag is valid for a period of 10 years, following which it can be renewed. The University Grants Commission UGC has approved the guidelines for admission and supernumerary seats for international students in undergraduate and postgraduate programs in higher education institutions in India. The decision was made during the 560th meeting of the University Grants Commission. UGC Chairman Prof. M. Jagadish Kumar said, internationalization of higher education is an essential aspect of the National Education Policy NEP 2020 and helps in integrating the international and intercultural dimensions in higher education. The UGC also brought out guidelines for the establishment of research and development cells, RDCs, in universities and colleges. These guidelines provide a clear-cut roadmap for the establishment of RDCs with its objectives and functions. In a series of tweets, the UGC chairman said, the establishment of research and development cells in higher education institutions will enable the attainment of targets of Atman Nirbhar Bharat. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the 1.3 billion citizens across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saath. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ रीलिविंग द जर्नी ऑफ इंडिया सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस ओवर द लास्ट 75 इयर्स विद ऑल इंडिया रेडियो स्टार्टिंग 15 अगस्त 
The series will be broadcast on All India Radio, 100.1 FM Gold Channel, Prime Time News Bulletins, and across all its platforms. Tune in to stay updated with All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring you the story of the presidents of India who served the nation from the 26th of January 1950 to 25th of July 1987. The president is the constitutional head of the state of India and the supreme commander of the armed forces. The president is referred to as a first citizen of the country. There have been 15 presidents since the post was established when India was declared as a republic with the adoption of the constitution in 1950. Dr. Rajendra Prasad was the first president of the country who held the post from 26th of January 1950 to the 13th of May 19 1962 we have up to now been taking a pledge to achieve freedom and to undergo all sufferings and sacrifices for it time has come when we have to take a pledge of another kind let no one imagine that the time for work and sacrifice is gone and the time for enjoying the fruits thereof has come let us realize that the demand on our enthusiasm and capacity for an unselfish work in the future will be as great as if not greater than but what it has ever been before we have therefore to dedicate ourselves once again to the great cause that becomes us the task is great the times are propitious dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan was a president from the 13th of may 1962 to the 13th of may 1967 in our constitution it is laid down that we have to build a civilized society which is based on the freedom of the human spirit economic opportunities for all and social justice Zakir Hussain held the post from the 13th of May 1967 to the 3rd of May 1969 I pledge my loyalty to my country irrespective of region or language I pledge myself to work for its strength and progress the whole of Bharat's my home and the people of my family Muhammad Hidayatullah was the acting president from the 20th of July 1969 to the 24th of August 1969. VV Giri was elected as a president on the 24th of August 1969 and he continued till the 24th of August 1974. Do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of the president of India and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect and defend the constitution. and the law and that i will devote myself to the service and well being of the people of india fakhruddin ali ahmed became the president on the 24th of august 1974 and held the post till the 11th of february 1977 fakhruddin ali ahmed do swear in the name of god that i will faithfully, faithfully execute the office of president of india bd jatti was the acting president from the 11th of february 1977 to the 25th of july 1977 neelam sanjeeva reddy was elected as a president on the 25th of july 1977 and he continued till the 25th of july 1982 i i neelam sanjeeva reddy choose swear in the name of god that i will faithfully execute the office of president of india gyani zail singh served as a president from the 25th of july 1982 to the 25th of july 1987 hai zail singh do swear in the name of god that i will faithfully execute the office of president of india In tomorrow's episode we will bring you the story of the presidents who served the nation from 25th of July 1987 onwards Azad Bharat ki baat Aakashvani ke sath can be accessed on @airnewsalerts on Twitter News on AIR official YouTube channel News on AIR app Facebook and Instagram handles so tune into All India Radio News for Azad Bharat ki baat Aakashvani ke sath The daughter of an eminent Russian ideologue has been killed in a suspected car bomb attack outside Moscow. Russian state investigators said today, investigators said Daria Dugina, daughter of prominent ideologue Alexander Dugin, was killed last evening after a suspected explosive device blew up her Toyota Land Cruiser she was driving. 
The Russian Foreign Ministry speculated that Ukraine might have been behind the attack. However, Ukraine has denied any involvement. The head of Russia's investigative committee ordered the institution's central branch to take over the investigation. Alexander Dugin, Daria's father, has long advocated the unification of Russian-speaking and other territories in a vast new Russian empire. The governor of Indiana arrived in Taipei on Sunday. He becomes the latest U.S. official to visit Taiwan and defying pressure from China for such trips to not happen. Taiwan's presidential office said Governor Eric Holcomb will meet President Tsai Ing-wan tomorrow morning. Mr. Holcomb tweeted that he would also be visiting South Korea. China claims democratically governed Taiwan as its own territory, despite Taipei's strong objections. It has been carrying out war games and drills near Taiwan since U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a two-day visit to Taipei earlier this month. Last week, the second group of U.S. lawmakers visited Taiwan. Meanwhile, Taiwan's defense ministry said 12 Chinese aircrafts and five Chinese ships were detected operating around Taiwan on Sunday, including five aircrafts that crossed the Taiwan Strait median line as Beijing continued military activities near the island. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has tested positive for COVID-19 a week before the leader was expected to attend an African Development Conference in Tunisia. An official from the Prime Minister's Office of Japan said Prime Minister Kishida took a PCR test today after experiencing mild temperature and a cough. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has wished the Japanese Prime Minister a speedy recovery. In Durand Cup football, Army Green defeated Northeast United FC in Guwahati by 3-1. It was Northeast United FC's second consecutive defeat in the tournament. In the second match, the winning streak of the local giants Mohammedan Sporting continued as they defeated Jamshedpur FC 3-0 in Kolkata. Jamshedpur FC put up a strong fight, but it was the superior Mohammedan FC who got the better of them with better possessions and smarter strategy throughout. In cricket, India will take on Zimbabwe in the final one-day international of the three-match series in Harare tomorrow. The match will begin at 12.45 p.m. Indian time. India have gained an unassailable 2-0 lead over Zimbabwe after claiming victories in first two matches. In the second ODI, which was played yesterday at Harare Sports Club, India defeated Zimbabwe by five wickets. While the visitors will be eyeing a clean sweep for Zimbabwe, it will be game to earn a consolation win. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Mumbai is likely to have generally cloudy skies with moderate rain. Kolkata is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Chennai will witness generally cloudy skies. Srinagar and Muzaffarabad are expected to have partly cloudy skies. Jammu will have mainly clear skies, becoming partly cloudy towards the afternoon or evening. Leh will have mainly clear skies. Gilgit will have a cloudy sky with the possibility of rain, thunderstorms or dust storms. In the south, Hyderabad will experience a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Bengaluru, Tiruvannantapuram will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In the northeast, Kowahati will have partly cloudy skies with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In Fala, is all Shillong, Gangtok, Kohima, and Itanagar will have partly cloudy skies with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now, before we close the headlines once again, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar says China's disregard of border pacts casting shadow on relations with India. Home Minister Amit Shah addresses public meeting in Telangana, assures farmers of special measures for marketing of organic produce. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari says conversion of waste material to wealth vital for country's infrastructure development. Senior Congress leader Anand Sharma quits as chairman of steering committee of parties Himachal Pradesh unit. A Pakistani intruder arrested near LOC in Rajauri district of Jammu and Kashmir. Government awards GI tag to Mithila Makhana to boost farmers' income. Endurance Cup football, Army Green defeat Northeast United FC 3-1 at Guwahati. Mohammedan Sporting beat Jamshedpur FC 3-0 in Kolkata. And in cricket, India to take on Zimbabwe in third and final one-day international in Harare tomorrow. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.